Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to yet another video. Um, so as you can see down below, I want to jump on the bandwagon and do this um, things I regret purchasing in my 20s. Um, just because I am reaching the end of my 20s this year. That was hard for me to say, but I am reaching the end of my 20s this year. And looking at other people's videos, it really made me go back and reflect like, what have you bought, Sharante, that you really don't use, that you spent a group of money for? So I was able to find actually a few things that I'm looking back and I'm like, why did you buy that? So if you want to see it, stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Okay, so the very first thing that I found that I know, like even a few months after, I, well, I won't say a month, probably like a year after I bought them, I won't say uh, somewhere in between, about a year. So about a year after I bought them, it was one of those things that was like, yo, why did I buy this? Even to this day, I still question why did I buy these? Like, it was something that I really, really wanted. It is a designer luxury item. Um, and it's going to be, I'm sure you guys have seen these on other people's videos because it's just one of those things where it's like, do you really even need these? Um, but it is my Christian Louis Vuittons, and it is in the oh my God, I got it in the bag. It's the So Kate. Um, so let me show you guys. Got it in the bag here. So it is the So Kate, um, the patent leather black ones. These were my very first pair of designer shoes. Um, I bought them in a time where like it was everywhere everybody was saying christian louis vuitton louis vuitton louis vuitton everybody was wearing christian louis vuittons and the so kate's um this is what they look like on the bottom i have worn them multiple times none recently honestly the last time i put these on i think i tried them on to see if i could wear them with an outfit but my feet and my ankles really were not having it so i took them off um now for these here's the box i dropped that much for them so they weren't cheap um so like i said it was one of those things where it was like oh i can afford something i want a luxury item i have a shoe collection i love shoes um so it's like i have to have a pair of these now don't get me wrong these are definitely a staple item um you know and depending on the situation i would slip them back on my feet um but i wouldn't do it for something long term this is something that i don't really necessarily have to have these um i wish i was throwing money on something else maybe something a little bit more comfortable um but nevertheless i have them like i said my opinion they're not worth it and i wish i would have saved my 700 dollars for these so moving right along put these back the next thing that i have is yet another pair of designer shoes um I am all for, yes, if you can afford it, by all means, do what you want to do with your money. And at the time of me buying all this stuff, yes, I was in a place where I can afford it. And even now, I can still maintain or afford it. It's just, it's like one of those things that's like, why did I drop this much money on something that I don't use or I don't necessarily um, see any value in it anymore? Um, so the next pair, like I said, is another pair of shoes. And they are my Chanel shoes. Yet again, I wanted a pair of designer shoes. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against designer shoes. I have other designer shoes, and I will continue to buy designer shoes. But I think as I get older, I will look into not just the hype of the name or the brand or the style or the trend, um, but what works best for me being that I'm dropping all this money and I have to wear them. Um, so the next pair are some Chanel Espadrilles. They look like this. I have worn them, so they are going to have some wear on them. You'll see on the inside because I had to break them in. Um, but these are velvet, black velvet espadrilles. Story behind these. I'll show you guys both of them so you can see. Well, before that, even that. These also were the same price, $6.75. So, story behind these is... I was at a point, once again, where I can afford them. I wanted to buy myself something nice. I think I bought them for my birthday i want to say um a few years back um and don't get me wrong they're super cute it was during a time frame of i don't know if you guys remember they had the black leather ones they were like this and they were really popular they still just like this except for they were leather and so i had went to the i bought them from Saks. so i went to a Saks, and i want the black leather ones but they didn't have them in my size so this was the next best thing in my opinion at that time and so yet again it was one of those like 
just do it purchases so i just did it um i bought them now don't get me wrong they're super cute um i regret buying them one because they hurt um the bottom of them if you stand on them for a long period of time and this is some kind of like cork or something in here or rubber i don't know what this bottom is but if it hurts your feet there's no cushion in these shoes there's no cushion whatsoever um and then the fact that they're velvet and they're espadrilles so to me that doesn't go together now that I think about it because velvet to me is not a summertime um, material. It makes me think of like more so like winter or fall. Um, but then an espadrille to me in the winter or fall doesn't make any sense because I think of espadrille, I think of summertime. So, I mean, I wear them occasionally. Um, I wear them every once in a while, but yet again, I don't wear them long term. Like, I'll wear them if I'm going to, like, to the store or something like that. I'll go to the mall and I'll just throw them on. Um, but will do would i buy another pair of these probably not two that i regret buying you guys seen in other people's videos because they're not lying these are some some stuff you do have to like think about before you just purchase it and i think sometimes we get just so caught up, especially in our 20s we want what we want and when we have the opportunity to do it we do it without thinking about it and then we look back and we're like what the heck why did i make that decision but that's part of life we learn and we grow and we learn from our mistakes so the next thing i regret purchasing is my car um so i've probably seen other videos i too drive a bmw um i have a bmw 328 and i'll put a picture of her somewhere on here so you guys can see what i'm referring to she is white she is pretty she has tinted windows and i love the car um but I, at this period in my life i wish i would have bought my car either at a later time or i would have spent more time until my purchase like it was one of those things literally my mom had drove by seen the car oh no i had seen the car and we went to go look at it. My mom was with me and it was just, at the time I did need a car. Um, my credit score and everything was perfect. I could afford the payments. I could put a down payment. I could do all the stuff that they wanted me to do. I got approved the car, no problem. Um, but at the time, I think we was just so hyped on getting the car. But the price I paid for the car was way too much because I can get the same car in a newer edition for a heck of a lot less now today. Um, so I didn't, I'm still making payments on the car. I'm almost the car is almost paid off, thank God. Um, but the car, I'm actually not even driving it. Wanna know why? Because foreign cars are expensive when it comes to maintenance. My car, I put so much money into that car, maintenance-wise, that at this point I refuse to put another dollar into that car for maintenance. Um, so right now I'm not even driving the car because it's down, something's wrong with the engine, or some kind of leakage in the at the, at the bottom of the car, I don't even the proper terminology, but they want me to drop at least another five G's just to get that car fixed. I'm not doing that. So um, that's almost paying off the rest of the, of the car. So I, I just don't see a value at this point in my life to put more money into that car. I've dropped so much money, like so much money. Everything possible. It's like one thing breaks, it gets fixed, and then something else breaks. And then it's not like a regular car where you can go get it fixed for like maybe 200 or $300. We're talking two thousand or three thousand dollars. It's not even like because people are like, "Oh, well, you can take it to my homeboy or take it to so and so. This is working my car fixed." And I'm like, "Thank you, but no, thank you." Because the thing about foreign cars is, if they're not used to working on foreign cars, you don't want to take it just to any old body because if they mess it up, it's going to cost you more in the long run to get it fixed when you just take it to the dealership. However, the dealership they up the prices. They're so expensive compared to regular mom and pop shop. Um, so. Nevertheless, I do regret getting my car. Don't get me wrong, I love the car. I love my car. I love it. I've had some very good times with it. I love driving. I love the house fast she is and all the stuff. But I kind of regret buying her. Might well not regret buying her. So, moving right along. Next one. So, my next regret is not really buying. I didn't have an option. Um, is my student loans. Student loans suck. Student loans, I hate them. They come back to haunt you. They want you to go to school and get an education and do all this stuff and say, here, sign these papers and you will give you some money to assist you with your education. A couple years, not even a couple years, a year after you graduate, yeah, I've got my papers, I got my diploma, blah, blah, blah. Here comes Sally Mae. Sally Mae is coming to collect her money that you don't have because you just spent all your money in college and now you're trying to find a job. 
Um, on top of that, Sally Mae also has what we call interest. So she puts some additional money on top of any, or what, on top of what she already is going to collect from you. So student loans. I regret signing up for as many student loans as I did. Um, I had to get through school. I needed books. I needed to, you know, take classes and stuff. And I did what I had to do to get what I had to get done. Um, nevertheless, student loans suck. If you can avoid them, apply for grants. Um, anyway, if you can work through it, however you have to do, avoid student loans at all possibility. Moving right along, my last thing that I regret um, buying, I really have to think about this one because I want to say I regret buying it. I mean, I do, I regret buying it now, but at the time I kind of needed it. Um, so that is going to be my Canon this is the first real camera that I bought. It was a Canon T6 or the Canon Rebel T6. And she looks like this. Now, I bought this camera because I was highly influenced by YouTube. Um, so I was in this phase where I really wanted to do YouTube. Like, YouTube was life. That's all I watch is YouTube. I watch YouTube more than um, TV. And I was like, I can do that. I want to do that. But I didn't realize that there were other ways of me to make films or to make videos. Like, right now, I'm filming on my phone. So I went out and purchased this expensive camera. Now this is the this is the even my like T6i. This is the Rebel T6, and I think that's one of the reasons why I regret purchasing because the T6i had the flip screen and the T6 did it. But at the time of me wanting to film everything, I didn't realize that I needed a flip screen. And so I bought this camera. Don't get me wrong, I've taken some really good pictures. I really haven't made any videos off of this camera, which is the whole reason for me buying it. But I have taken some pretty decent pictures on this. Um, I do have a whole different camera now. I actually have two different cameras now that I use to uh, make videos, if I make videos or at least take pictures on. Um, but this camera came in a kit. The kit was roughly about $595, I want to say. I bought it from Sam's Club because um, I have a membership and they have the kit there. It was like a holiday special or something um but i don't i didn't need this i haven't really used it enough and like i said i have a high this high tech phone here that i could pretty much do anything and everything that i needed to do in regards to the reason why i thought i needed this camera um yeah so those were just a few things that i found in my house sitting around my house that i realized yo i don't even need this stuff like i don't know why i bought it it was a spare the spur of the moment to um make that purchase and um I don't know what that is. Oh, somebody's back on the truck up. Um, but it was a spare of the moment purchase. Um, so lesson to be learned is think about your purchases before you buy them. Some things that we say that we want, um, we don't need. Um, and don't try to, you know, trying to keep up with everybody else like that camera. I was trying to keep up with YouTube and not really saying I could make the same type of quality videos as anybody else posting them um, through stuff I already have, such as my phone. Um, or even the shoes. Don't try to keep up with the, what you see on Instagram and stuff like that and make stupid purchases. Um, so nevertheless, that's what I purchased in my 20s that I have regret. As I approach my 30s, I am well, um, well more aware of what I spend my money on, uh, especially trying to get up debt and uh, you know clean up stuff and I'm starting a business and stuff like that. Um, I'm well more aware of what I'm spending my money on. So. Yeah, if you guys like the video make sure that you like the video um and then maybe if you have something that you've seen on here that you have questions about or why i regret even more you want more details let me know i can let you know um via the comments or send me a dm on my instagram um that i will put somewhere on here or up there up there somewhere on here um but until then guys i'll see you in the next video bye